Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. This is the Boston Marathon Edition. We're presented and hosted by Highlands. Stop your cramp, not your race. By Polar. Check out the new Polar Vantage M and the Marathon Edition. And you can perform, work out, energize. Our next guest, Devin Murphy, joins us. Devin, how are you doing? I'm good. This is uh, an interesting experience. Yes. Now, this will be your second Boston Marathon. Yep, second one. On a hand cycle? On a hand cycle. How'd you do last year in the hand cycle? I froze, but I came in second. That was so cold. Cold, wet, windy. I couldn't get my... I tried to get a gel out of my pocket. Couldn't do it. My hands were, were numb. Yeah, my, my hands were toast, too. So we go back to the summer of 1990. You're playing Little League Baseball. Not and very well. Not very well, right? Little League Baseball and uh, broke your hip trying to catch a pop-up. But you didn't know it was a broken hip, correct? No clue. I knew. I jumped up. I landed. Something popped. Yes. Didn't think anything of it. Played another inning. Now, were you living here or where were you living? Nope. Upstate New York. Up near Lake Placid. Yep. Okay. So, when you're, you're obviously you're in pain. I'm guessing you're limping. What did the doctor <laughs> say? Uh, the doctor said, you have a pulled muscle. You need to go to PT, you need to run, you need to swim, and you need to ride your bike. And no x-ray, nothing like that? No x-ray. And when did they realize, so, that, so January 20th, 1991, uh, this went undiagnosed for three months, and then on the 20th of 91, the doctors told you and your parents that you what you had six your osteosarcoma and you had six weeks to live? I was misdiagnosed. They didn't know it was osteosarcoma the first time, okay. but they did know, you know, hey, you're going to die. Go home. Do hospice. Six weeks. Six weeks. So you went from there's nothing wrong, it's just a pulled muscle, to you're going to die in six weeks. Yeah, it's kind of a slap in the face. <laughs> you think? <laughs> a I little mean, bit. How did you and the family react to this? Um, almost like denial, but not quite because it was denial with motivation. Right. It was, no, this isn't happening. Did you find other doctors? We went to Burlington, Vermont. Same diagnosis. Last ditch effort, we came to MGH, and just everything changed. So they looked at the other diagnosis and said, that's wrong. Yeah, he shredded the documents in front of and us, at actually. At that point, had they, did they know, so did they identify it as cancer? Yeah, yep. Okay, so they identified it as cancer. So from going from six weeks to live, you go 18 months, you went through intense chemotherapy, 12-hour surgery plus 14 more surgeries. Yep. When did you and the family realize that maybe you might live? On uh, January 20th, 1990. So when they said, this is what we're going to do, this is a procedure, but you're going to live. When I was diagnosed, I said, there's no way. There's no way. This isn't happening. We're going to fight it. Okay. So they were, yeah. they were basically, we're part of your team. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This other stuff is garbage. Yep. You're going to live. Yep. And you're going to thrive. Absolutely. So after all the surgeries and everything that's going on, after Sorry. everything that's going on, what... Uh, where you ended up sleep, uh, living on a couch? I mean, did sport even enter your life? Sport did not enter my life until 2014. Okay. I decided, I, you know, when I was going through chemo in Boston, yeah. I knew I was going to do the Boston Marathon if I grew up. Yes. That was the goal. If I, if I live. If I live, yeah. I'm going to do Boston. If I grow up to be an adult. I was 11 at the time. If I grow up, that's what I'm doing. The only way I knew that I could do it. Yes was through the Jimmy Fund walk. So I took my crutches and I raised the money and I walked 26.2 miles on With the course. With crutches? Yeah. How long did this take? 12 hours. 12 hours for 26 miles. I've gotten faster. Uh, 12 hours. Oh my God. You, you, you're finishing in the dark. What the heck? Basically, yeah. It was a long day. But that got you a spot in Boston. No, that was literally just a fundraiser. That's oh, that, that all was that a fundraiser. was. That okay. was that was my way of being able to do the race. I didn't know about hand cycling at the time. Okay. But yes. I did so much damage to my body that I, day. I, you think? Went on the internet and said, "Hey, cool! They have these things called hand cycles. I want one." And then it was, "Oh wow, look, they're really expensive." Yes. Yeah. So what happened next? Um, a desperate internet search. I ended up getting a grant through uh, the I Am Able Foundation. They said, "Here's your bike." Yeah. Challenge Athlete Foundation stepped in and said, you know what? We'll help you race. We'll help you race. We'll help you race. We'll get you to the race. Absolutely. I do the work. They help me out. It's incredible. So we got you to here last year? Yep. Through CAF? Yes. That is so cool. They also got me to the New York City Marathon where I won. 
you win the New York City Marathon Hand Cycle Division. And, and you do Boston. Yep. And now you're doing your second Boston. Yep. And how important has hand cycling been for you? It's been a life changer. I mean, I went from being 60, 70 pounds overweight. Wow. Hanging, oh my God, you're fit. Hanging, that's thanks to my coach. Right. So, hanging out on the couch, not knowing, you know, how can I change my life? Right. And then I did my first marathon and I went, oh my God, I'm terrible. I'm horrible. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. So, started eating right, working out five, six times a week. And then all this magic kind of happened where I'm doing stuff and I'm doing well. And besides hand cycling, what else are you doing? Uh, indoor rock climbing, kayaking, um, really want to get into push rim. Um, now, you start doing hand cycling and push rim, you know what that means. Absolutely. That means triathlon. Oh, you know I know. The, you, I know. <laughs> you have to pair a try. I know. Is that, is that on the agenda? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. First thing I want to try to push rim yeah. and see how that goes. Yeah. Now, do you swim? About that, no. You don't swim yet. <laughs> Not very well. Yeah, I swim. You don't need to. So, you also have a, you're, you don't have, you do not have a hip? What's the uh, deal? Right hip joint's missing. The right hip joint's missing. It was so, like, cancer riddled that that came out completely. And what are they? And you have a cadaver bone? And my femur. So my hips fuse. There's literally no joint that there whatsoever. The, the hip and put a femur, a, a, a cadaver bone in for your femur. Yep. And how do you, I mean, is it similar to someone putting in a grant, uh, trying to get a organ when you try to get a, a bone? It's yeah. It's like you need to find somebody who's sort of recently de deceased? It had to be, you know, similar body type. Yes. Blood type, the whole bit. And it's, it couldn't be like a lot taller than you. Yeah, that would have been really bad. That would have been really bad. All of a sudden you're like the leaning tower. Right, exactly. <laughs> How long were you on a waiting list for that? Um, the surgery was on April 26th, so it wasn't very long of that same year. Of that same uh, year. Yeah, of 91, so. That is unbelievable. Now, and you do have a... Uh, a human pet <laughs> trick to show us on yeah, camera. I have a stupid human trick. Okay, let's see. All right. Mike's got to set up the camera. Okay. Let's see. We got this thing set up. Okay. Right. You ready, Mike? All right. All right. You ready for this one? Oh, let me hold this. Yes. Here's the stupid human pick. Don't try that at home. That could really hurt. And I bet Meb can't do that. <laughs> you are the best. So, Devin, uh, you're after Boston. Do you have plans for other races? Yeah, I'm doing the um, Vermont City Marathon in Memorial Day weekend, okay. followed by the New York City Marathon again. So you, you're a busy girl. I try to be. I like that. How important has sport been, getting this back? It's been incredible. I didn't know I was missing it. I think that's the most incredible part. Right. Yeah, you know, in sport, sports, that luxury, quote-unquote luxury item that you don't have the equipment to do, but you realize that it makes you feel it, it, it's essential part of life. Yeah, it's literally become like, I don't want to say my purpose. Right. But it just drives me to do so much more. Do you find people reaching out to you and looking for your support and help because they're sort of at the place you used to be? I do, and it's so weird. I'm like, how did I get to this part? You know, how did I get here? Well, because you've been doing the right stuff. But see, you've been a little, even as long as Challenged Athletes has been around, people still need the people still are out there who don't know what's out there, like yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you didn't find hand cycling for how long? It was almost 25 years later, I 25 think. 25 years. 25 years of nothing, so. Wow. And now a lot of a lot of years of everything. Oh, yeah, definitely. You're making up for lost time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Devin, thank you so much for taking time. Thank you, and thank you for what you do. Love it. Devin Murphy has been our guest. Again, Breakfast with Bob, Boston Marathon Edition. Hold on, everybody. We will be right back.